This is lecture outline eight, chemical calculations. I've got uh, four different colors of pens here. We're going to need our calculator, our scientific calculator, quite a bit. And I've got my periodic table on standby over here. So I think I'm all ready, and hopefully you are too. Now, uh, we'll start with a little bit of review. We talked about the two interpretations of a chemical reaction before, and I've got my chemical reaction here, uh, nitrogen gas plus uh, three hydrogen gas goes to two ammonia gas. And I've got uh, pictures of these molecules for what they might, or representations of them. So we've got nitrogen here, hydrogen, three molecules here, and two molecules of ammonia. And this first line is going to be the molecular interpretation. And what it says is that one molecule of nitrogen reacts with three molecules of hydrogen to produce, to produce two molecules of ammonia. That's the atomic or molecular interpretation. The mole interpretation is on this level right here. It says one mole of nitrogen plus three moles of hydrogen reacts to produce two moles of ammonia. And while we've covered both of those interpretations before, I did not cover the relationship between them, and I just want to spend a little bit of time going over that. Let's start by talking about this three molecules of hydrogen. And I wrote of there, but I didn't have to. Ooh. So uh, I started my picket fence, but I need to do something first. So what we can imagine is, instead of molecules, that we're going to multiply this times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, Avogadro's number. And that will give us a new number of molecules. And let's write that. Well, uh, up, yeah, let's write it out. <clears throat> so 3 times 6.022 exponent 23rd equals 1.8066. Uh, one, yeah. So, uh, as I've always said, uh, I like to keep three sig figs, but we'll keep them all this time. Times 10 to the 24 molecules of hydrogen. Now I need to do my picket fence. and keep all my units while I do it. I'll take my molecules of H2, and this may seem a little strange, but hopefully in the end I'll make a good point. So we know that there are Avogadro's number of molecules, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of H2 in one mole of H2. And when we do this, mathematically we multiply it and then we divide it by this in a unit conversion factor, this same Avogadro's number. But let's go ahead and do it anyway. Divided by 6.022 exponent 23rd, I get 3, but now my units have changed. I have moles of H2 and well, if what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that if you take the molecular or the atomic uh, interpretation of a chemical reaction and you multiply all of the terms times Avogadro's number and convert into moles, you get the mole interpretation. So they are totally equivalent. One is just deals in moles. So basically you take the molecular interpretation and you multiply it times Avogadro's number to get the mole interpretation. Entirely equivalent. Now, this lecture outline, this module, we're going to be using the mole interpretation exclusively. And so let's get comfortable with moles. Now, uh, again, this is a bit of review, but I want to cover uh, more depth this time. We've talked about mole-to-mole -mole conversion factors using the coefficients of the balanced reaction. And as examples, some of those 
we might come from this reaction would be that three moles of hydrogen react to produce two moles. And so what we said was, we don't usually write react, but at the beginning, since it's a reactant, we will react to produce two moles of NH3 produced. I guess that we could write reacted to two and produced. There we go. And again, what we'll do from now on is we'll just do the three moles of hydrogen over two moles of ammonia. And the words reacted and produced will uh, not be said. They don't affect the math. They don't cancel the units. Just part of our thought process. Now, uh, other mole-to-mole uh, -mole conversion factors using the coefficients in the balanced uh, reaction. Well, of course, we can flip this. to get another unit conversion factor. And whether we have the one here or we flip it to get the one over there depends on the problem we're trying to solve, as we'll see. Some other ones, um, nitrogen going to, so one, one mole nitrogen is reacted to produce two moles of ammonia. And I wanna emphasize this too, as we'll see, you can do multiple -mole conversion factors between two different reactants, or if we had, you could do between two different products too. So how about three moles H2, one mole N2. And this is equivalent to saying that for every three moles of hydrogen reacted, one mole of nitrogen is reacted. Okay. Now, um, now we can start to ask questions. How many moles of ammonia, that's right here, can be made from nine moles of hydrogen? Well, uh, we can see that nine is three times this, and so maybe we can do this in our head and say, well, since this one's three times the three here, our amount of ammonia would be six moles made. But uh, we're going to do our picket fence and show you how this works. We've got nine moles of hydrogen. We're going to moles of ammonia. So our mole to mole conversion factor will actually be this one right here. And I'll circle that in red. And write it in red. Three moles of hydrogen for two moles of ammonia. And we can see that our moles of hydrogen cancel out, leaving us with moles of ammonia. And then we multiply the numbers across the top, divide by the numbers on the bottom. Nine times two divided by three. Indeed, we do get six moles of ammonia. And those are nice even numbers. Usually we won't be dealing with nice even numbers like in this problem. And this time it'll be how many moles of ammonia can be made from 47.6 moles of hydrogen. Like we've said before, this is gonna be our given number and it's our starting point, just like we did in the previous example. So our given is gonna be 47.6 moles of hydrogen. We're going to be using the same mole to mole uh, ratio using coefficients that we did for the last problem. And while the numbers are different, the process is the same. We'll multiply the two numbers on the top, divide by the number on the bottom. We have 47.6 times two divided by three. And I get 32, three sig figs, 31.7 moles of hydrogen. Oh, moles of, sorry, moles of ammonia like so. Now, um, as I mentioned, mole-to-mole -mole conversions work for any combination of reactants and products. We've got a different reaction here. This is the combustion of propane, C3H8. 
And this time it says how many moles of propane will be used to make 13.6 moles of carbon dioxide. That's going to be propane and carbon dioxide. We've also got how many moles of oxygen can be made from 1.67 moles of propane. Those are both going to be our reactants. It's the same process. You need to get your mole to mole conversion. Well, let's see, start with your given, 13.6 moles. Use your mole to mole conversion factor. I know that I've got moles of carbon dioxide on the top, so I know that I need moles of carbon dioxide on the bottom. And my coefficient is three. For a mo uh, sorry, propane, I've got a one mole of propane. And I want you to go ahead and set that up and solve it. I'm uh, sorry, and solve it mathematically with proper units. Um, now, how many moles of oxygen? So same process, here's our given, 1.67, let's change colors, Ooh, try to. Now we have our moles of propane. We have, we know that moles of propane have to go on the bottom because the moles of propane have to cancel out. Our units do change as part of this. We know that we have a one coefficient here we know that we have a five coefficient for our oxygen, which we're being asked about. And I want you to go ahead and finish the math for that example as well.